In a groundbreaking legal development, a Florida family has filed a claim against NASA for damages caused by a piece of space debris that crashed through their home. This is the first time NASA has faced such a claim, and the outcome could set a precedent for future cases involving space debris in reentries. Here's a little clip from a Wink News report interviewing the family. There are several articles online about trash from the International Space Station hitting Earth on March 8th. The same day the Otero's home was hit, and they want answers. Very heavy and very uh, damaging. I mean, this lands on anybody or any structure will completely destroy it. Meet the Otero family from Naples, Florida. In March, a chunk of space debris crashed through their roof, causing significant damage. But here's the kicker. The debris was part of a battery pack jettisoned from the International Space Station in 2021. That's right, space junk falling from the sky. The Otero family is seeking compensation for property damage, business interruption, and even emotional distress. Their attorney has filed a claim with NASA asking for in excess of $80,000. NASA has confirmed that the debris came from a battery pack they were responsible for. So let's talk about the legal implications. Well, this case is unprecedented. No one has ever made a claim against NASA for space debris damage before. How NASA responds will set a precedent for future cases involving space debris and re-entries. If the debris had come from another country, the victims would be entitled to compensation under the Space Liability Convention. But since the debris came from the International Space Station, the Otero family is making a claim under the Federal Torts Claim Act. This story raises important questions about space debris and its liability. As space activity increases, we can expect to see more cases like this in the future. NASA has six months to review the Otero family's claim, and I'll be keeping an eye on the story and will update you as it develops. Also, if you've been following my channel long enough, you've seen me talk about space debris and space junk with Jonathan McDowell many, many times. And this is a clip from an interview I did back in August 2022 with the title, Should We Be Worried About All This Falling Space Junk? This was after the Australian Space Agency confirmed that space debris found in the Snowy Mountains in southern New Wales belonged to a craft built by SpaceX. There's an increasing awareness that uh, uh, maybe we've, we've been playing the odds a little too long, right? Eventually, you're gonna, uh, your luck is going to run out. And an awareness that larger, a larger fraction of a re-entering object survives than we had used to think. Relatively small re-entering objects survive more than don't burn up entirely, right? Mm -hmm. And and that that sort of you know we used to think okay if it was small it would burn up entirely. Well, maybe not so much. In fact, Jonathan was corresponding with Alejandro Otero on X. Jonathan asked, "Did you happen to note the exact time it happened?" And Alejandro shared this clip from Friday, March 8th at 2.34 p.m. And this is the sound, apparently, of it crashing into his roof with a timestamp. And Jonathan confirms that's 1934 UTC, which is consistent with the Space Force estimate of reentry over the Gulf at 1929 UTC. Back in March, Alejandro said that he was eagerly awaiting communication from the responsible agencies as their assistance is crucial in revolving damages from this deliberate release, and more importantly, how in the future to arrange the payload so it will burn in its entirety as it re-enters. And apparently for Alejandro, his son was at home when this happened. He was two rooms over and heard it all. So it really is something to consider and something that I've been talking about for years as something that may eventually become a really big problem. And hopefully it doesn't actually end up killing anyone, but I'm very interested to see the outcome of this claim. And so I wanted to make this video as well because I think it's an important topic to talk about. Tim Dodd or Everyday Astronaut just shared this crazy video on X. <laughs> And so in this video, you can see a booster falling back to Earth. He says this is terrifying. That's toxic hypergolic propellant. So this was behind the scenes. This was posted on a Chinese media site. 
but this was actually from a launch. China recently launched a French astrophysics satellite, and as you can see, the debris fell over a populated area. So a Long March 210, like Starship does, it uses a toxic hypergolic mix of nitrogen, tetroxide, and hydrazine, or unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine. So it produces this really freaky looking reddish brown gas or smoke and contact with either the remaining fuel or oxidizer from the rocket stage could be very harmful to people. And falling rocket debris is a common issue with China's launches from its three inland launch sites. China just doesn't have the same respect and care like many other space agencies does for this type of reentry. And clearly we're seeing issues too now with this unprecedented claim toward NASA for this family in Florida. So I just think it's a, a very relevant topic to talk about. We're probably only going to see more of this because we are launching so much stuff into space right now. And so I want to get your perspective in the comments. What do you think should be done for the family in Florida by NASA? Do you think that they should get the $80,000? And also, what do you think can be done about this issue of China not really having the same uh, procedures and sort of respect that other space agencies seem to have for controlling re-entries of space junk and boosters? So I think that the combination of that uh, of being surprised by how much actually does survive entry and the fact that, yeah, you know, you can only play the odds for so long uh, makes us a little more conservative in the years to come, I think, about what stuff we allow to make uncontrolled re-entries like this. Let me know in the comments and thank you so much to everyone who supports my channel. Again, thank you for the over 100,000 subscribers. It is truly a dream come true. And so subscribe because you won't want to miss what I have coming next.